Good morning, everybody. This is Mr. Coppertite with a video for 143. Uh, this is actually take two. I just uh, realized I actually just recorded this video and um, I forgot to turn off uh, some music. So, unfortunately, you don't hear me. You hear nothing but the music. So, I have to re record this video. So, this is uh, going to be a little faster uh, than the previous one and because I've uh, already done it once. Um, as the case may be. But anyway, I want to show you in this video uh, how to do numbers 5, 6, and most of 7, uh, which is basically the you know hardest part of this activity is uh, going through these particular uh, areas of, of, uh, of code. And what I've done so far uh, here is I've just got a cut and paste the uh, code. They ask you to do that for number 5. And what they ask you to do number 5 is basically before uh, it generates the image on the subplot and shows you the image, uh, it's going to make some modifications to it. In this case, the modifications that are going to be made are going to be sort of a uh, yellow rectangle. And when I run this program, it's going to display this yellow rectangle over here. And note that the reason it does that is because it's doing a what's called nested for loop. And this nested for loop starts at the 200th row and ends at the 220th row. But when that loop is running, there's another loop inside that runs every single time this loop runs. So while this loop is running 21 times, this loop is going to run 51 times per uh, 21 of these loops, right? So 51 times 21, whatever that happens to be. I know it's over 1,000. Uh, I'm not going to do mental math right now, but I'm sure if you really, really want to know, you just hit your calculator and see what happens. So that means that it, basically it's going to be modifying a little over 1,000 pixels and changing these 1,000 pixels to yellow each, right? So um, by assigning different colors on here, it means we can actually modify each pixel uh, on a, well, each, the image, excuse me, on a pixel by pixel basis. And uh, what it wants us to do in number five, actually, is go ahead and do that. It wants us to change the code to create a green rectangle that covers the woman's earring, okay? So right now, this rectangle is generated over here. But I want the rectangle to generate over this earring. And I specifically want to change it to a green as well. So I have a couple of things I'm going to modify about this uh, section. First thing, one of the things I want to show you is a tool that's available to you when you display images is the zoom tool, right? You could just basically draw a box around where you want to zoom, and it will zoom that plot or that figure to that image. And if you want to just, you know, um, bring it back, you can, uh, I wonder, yeah, you can do that. You could just basically, uh, no, you can change borders. I'm not going to mess with that right now. Basically, I've zoomed in, and here's it, here it is. Okay, but anyway, um, no, just hit the house key. That's what it is. Anyway, sorry, digress. Back to the earring. Okay. What I need to know is where this earring is in the image. Notice that when I zoom in, it changes the labels on me, right? So the vertical axis is labeling all the rows. Horizontal axis is labeling the columns. So it's, it's, it's basically X, Y, but with the you know, slightly different labels that we're used to. Um, we have 420, 430. Um, yeah, it starts about 420, right? And ends about 465, 47, 467. We'll just round it up to 470. So instead of looping through 200 to 220, I want it to loop through 420 to 470, right? So uh, as far as the rows, and now as far as the columns, I'm going to look back at the here, left side. That's about 136, 135, 135 will go, and then 162. So 135 to 162. So I'm going to change the rows, columns, excuse me. 135, 162. And then it wants me to change it to a green. So since this is R, G, B, I want to change this to zero so it's all green. Now when I run this program, I get the image again, but this time I get a nice green rectangle over the woman's earring as requested. So we just zoom that in. See? Nothing but a green rectangle there, right? Cool. Okay. So that's the number five, really, what they want you to do show number five. We also have number six. Now in number six, they want us to paste this code in here. It's going to do another nested for loop, but this time it's going to actually do it through a range of rows, but all of the column or the entire, uh, basically every pixel in every in the, in the first 155 rows. And it's going to do an if then statement. And this says here the sum of the image RC is greater than 500. And what this is actually doing here, it's checking the color value, right? So because if I type in this image. If I type in a double bracket, it's just basically going to give me the third array that's within these two uh, arrays. And RGB goes up in this case. If we have it greater than 500, if we add up all the RGB values and it's greater than 500, which means it's more of a light color, it's going to change it to a magenta. So check this out, right? When I run this program, I'm going to get an image, and that image is going to be this really weird magenta looking sky, right? It's kind of hard to look at for a little while. It looks like there's a volcano exploding behind her. Um, but anyway, I digress. 
What they want you to do in this problem is they want you to now add the section of code to change the color of the woman's earring. Well, if they wanted to make it a separate section, um, I can do that. I can just basically take this code and I could copy again. I probably don't have to copy the height and width ones. I'm just going to copy the loop actually. Just, let's use efficient coding, right? Doesn't matter to reassign that. So we do that. But this time instead, I want to do it with the woman's earring, right? Well, I already have where the earring is. It's 420 to 470, 135 to 162. So instead of in range of 155, I'm going to do 420, 470, right? And then it was 135, 162. Yep, 135, 162. So instead of width, 135, 162. So basically, it's just looping through here now. So we want to change the color of the woman's earring. Let's just see if it works as is, right? If I zoom in, or sorry, if I run this program, and I zoom in, there it is, right? Yep. If I look at the earring, the earring has now changed. Some of its pixels have changed to a, uh, a magenta, right? And the image itself, some of the pixels, most of the pixels have the lighter ones, right? It's based on our algorithm. If I want more pixels to change, I could probably just you know, lower the requirement of the sum. Instead of sum being 500 on the second here, maybe what if I try like 300? Something a little lower, right? It's going to make a little bit more of a difference, more of a dramatic difference if I do that. Right, so now when I zoom in on that, if you can, you know, you can sort of go back and see. But now more pixels are changed. But notice that when I get to a certain value, right, that 300 is kind of a low sum of R RGBs. Some of the hairs are now trying to, are, are starting to change pixels too. So you don't want to go too low. You know, maybe like a, maybe 400 somewhere right in the middle might be a little better. Let's run that and see. All right. So if I make it 400, yeah, that, that, that's a little better, right? So if I zoom in again, just kind of see the earring. Yeah, see that makes more sense. Okay. So we've done that and save that code, sky change I called it. And I just want to show you the program they provide to you. And that program is basically called Make Mask. And what they do here in Make Mask is they do yet another nested for loop. And what they're checking here is using a couple of item data that they have. Uh, in this case, they're defining something called stripe width. Uh, and stripe width is basically, uh, well, think of it this way, it's a function, right? It's in, in this case, I've actually uh, kind of, you know, done this image here, and I can change different parameters about this about this thing. But you know, the default value is kind of like that, right? But if I change these, right, instead of 100, 120, if I make it say 70, 70, 10, right, what happens? I get thinner rows, <clears throat> I get thinner, you know, rows, and I also get. Um, you know, different locations. So you can kind of see the, the the change here, right? I can see slightly thinner rows. Matter of fact, I've actually got sort of a um, sort of a color change as well on that too. So let's let's try something a little more drastic. 10, 70, and 10. Right? Yeah, see now I get something different. See what happened is I'm I'm basically changing the dimensions of the image, right? So if I make 70, 70, I'm still getting a square, but I also could do 300 300 and then maybe 100 for large stripes, right? Yeah, see that that's the way that, that's the change we're getting here. Columns and rows would be one thing, but RGBA based on that image new. Sorry, that that's I'm looking at the wrong thing. Rows, columns, and stripe width, right? 300 rows, 300 columns, and 100 pixels in stripe width. If I make that 10, now I'm going to get something with a lot of stripes. Yep, see there it is. Okay, so. Just so you know how that works on this line right here, you can quick search change that. You can keep it the default values, it's fine. But they want you to basically change this. They want you to make a different mask out of this, right? So I just want to show you one of the things I changed in my definition was actually made it so that <coughs> it, uh, it, it went in a different direction. And I also made it so that there's more colors that show up. So there's a couple of things that you can do. Uh, I would like you, of course, to do something a little more creative. Uh, maybe try more colors, try. Um, you know, a different direction, maybe 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 a gentler slope, something like that. Just basically play it so that the you know it turns into a little pattern uh, that that belongs to you. Um, in this in this problem here, you would also you know you would give me the Python code uh, for this as well. And since it's generating an image by itself uh, without a base image, I should be able to run your program no problem uh, when you submit it to me. All right, so that's it. That's uh, the take two of one four three. Hopefully, this one will be just fine, and uh, we'll see you in video one four four.